On a warm summer's day last year, I hopped on a train and headed to Central Park in the midst of crowded New York. This was at the crack of dawn, and I was dressed from head to toe as the most famous plumber in the world, Mario. On arriving there and surrounded by a bunch of morning walkers, I donned a peculiar headset on my head and I began doing this. Even for seasoned New Yorkers, this must have been quite a sight. But while they could only see a dude jumping up and down, I was actually in an entirely different world. Because for that point of time, I wasn't just dressed as Mario, I actually was Mario. Embedded in a life-size version of the iconic first level of Super Mario Brothers that was present all around me, but at the same time visible just to me. So while to the casual observer, I was just a random New York weirdo doing his thing, there was actually a method to the madness. I was jumping because I was trying to reach and destroy the bricks that were floating above my head to gain power-ups and coins. I was flicking my fingers because I was trying to shoot fireballs at the Goombas that were coming at me. I was kicking because I wanted to send the Koopa Troopas spiraling away from me. And I was taking these giant leaps to traverse deep voids that had appeared in the ground below me. This was my first foray into the world of augmented reality. It's a technology that enables digital creations and digital objects to live in the world around us and interact with the real world around us. And it's something that I've been actively exploring since that fateful day that I jumped across um, New York City. So what exactly is it about AR that makes it so exciting? Why are people like Apple CEO Tim Cook calling it the next big thing to happen in computing and, and mobile phones? Well, to me, what is most exciting about AR is that it enables entirely new experiences. Experiences that would have not been possible without it. Thanks to AR, I was now the only person in the world who had actually physically moved through a digital version of a game, completing it end to end. That would have not been possible otherwise. And it's not just that. Over the course of the last year, I've continued exploring and presenting technologies that we're all familiar with in completely new and novel ways using AR. So growing up, like all of you, I grew up playing video games on handheld devices, on consoles, and on all uh, kinds of arcade machines. But the games and the characters that I so loved existed only within the screens in front of me. Could something really be done about that? And that's why I took Street Fighter II, a favorite childhood favorite of mine, and rebuilt it entirely as a multiplayer AR game that you could actually play in the real world. So you could take your characters and place them in the world around you, in a real street, on a real table. Could AR give rise to other forms of these real world gamings? Games that are, revolve around movement, exploration, and discovery? And if games can be brought to life, then why stop there? So here's Wiley e. Coyote, continuing his quest to catch the Roadrunner, brought to life in AR in a completely new and novel way to relive one of my favorite childhood cartoons. Could AR give rise to new forms of storytelling? When the Lumiere brothers first premiered their famous black and white silent film to audiences in Paris, a train slowly approaching the station, growing in size, filling up the screen, it is said that audiences ran away with fright certain that the train was going to plow right through them. That was a similar feeling that I was going for and that I was aiming for when I recreated the famous scene from the ring. Reenacting it, except this time, unlike the train, the character actually did come out of the screen and into the room with me. And not only did she come out of the screen, she then proceeded to chase me around the entire room. Could AR actually give form, uh, rise to new forms of storytelling, new forms of entertainment, stories that are driven not 
uh, just by, act, by passive viewership, by actually making us into active participants. Could AR give rise to new forms of digital companionship? Pets, avatars, and different forms of characters that live and breathe with us in the same space, that are able to interact with us, as well as the space around us? Could it give for rise to new forms of communication, bringing all our sci-fi fantasy, uh, fantasies to life, where we can teleport our loved ones into the same space with us? Could it give rise to new forms and completely new forms of interaction, ways that I can now control smart homes and devices in completely new and intuitive ways? Now, you might be wondering that this is, these are a lot of questions. Why so many questions? Well, every prototype that I build starts with a, sem a question similar to this. The reason it always starts with a question is because a question leads to a conversation. It initiates a discussion and it leads to the sharing of ideas. When I first put on an AR headset, and I clearly remember this, the graphics were not really good. I remember kind of looking around and the field of view was extremely limited and within a few minutes my head started aching with the weight of the device on my head. But at the same time, in spite of all this, the experience was, in one word, magical. This was the first time I'd ex truly experienced something so new and so novel. I can only imagine it's what the early people who had gone on the internet felt about it in its early days. And I now hope that you guys can also kind of start envisioning a future where AR has transformed industries from gaming to communication, uh, from productivity to entertainment, and beyond. And this will all be aided by advancements in technology and the access, hopefully really soon, to hands-free AR-mounted headsets. We are currently at what I like to call AR 1.0. We have a long way to go but we now have the tools available to all of us to start building and transforming the world around us into a massive digital play playground. And as I said, the tools are accessible to all of us. The first wave of AR-capable devices are literally sitting in our pockets right now. Where we go from here is up to all of us. So let's start hacking our reality. Thank you.